So in this last week, we've seen how much progress we've made in the last 20 years in terms of reducing child mortality from over 10 million per year to almost half that in 2017. And that's, most of that progress has been made in infectious diseases. And that's partly because there have been very specific interventions for prevention, like vaccines and insecticide-treated nets, and treatments, specifically in, in HIV and um, anti-malarials. Um, but looking forward, we've got many other challenges. The landscape has changed quite a lot. And so I'm going to be speaking about some of those challenges. So one of the challenges is there are populations who've been left behind or neglected. So I'm thinking specifically of very marginalised populations, children in conflict zones, um, children on the move. And if we look at progress, there have been countries which have been left behind and then children within countries, specifically the most poor. And looking forward, we've got to try and address some of those equity gaps. Secondly, some of the tools that made us so effective in the last couple of years, last 10 years, um, we are losing because of drug resistance. I'm thinking specifically of antimalarial drug resistance and antibiotic resistance. So there are threats in terms of our specific tools and also insecticide uh, resistance. Some of the big emerging challenges where there's a lot of scope for improvement is in reaching the needs of children in humanitarian crises and children in populations on the move. So it, it, children in conflict areas or who are in areas where there's been a recent natural disaster are subject to huge health needs. They are dying from things that they really shouldn't be dying of. For example, malaria, measles, other infectious diseases. And they're not having the level of um, preventative care, education, environment that will enable them to grow and develop into happy, healthy, young adults. So as we look forward um, through the next 10, 20, 30 years, as well as infectious diseases, I think we have to broaden our focus to other causes of mortality and morbidity in children and, and young, young adolescents. So we need to broaden our focus to include non-infectious diseases, non-communicable diseases, for example, asthma, and look at some of the causes, for example, environmental pollution, um, indoor cooking, um, that drive some of these important causes of child morbidity and mortality. In the last 10, 20 years, there was a big focus on child mortality. Now, as we look forward, we have to look beyond survival. So we have to look at the quality of life of children who have survived and ensure that they are developing and reaching their full potential, full potential so that they are, they are happy, productive young people and adults. Um, and that means looking also at disability, but also more subtle um, developmental issues like learning disability, nutritional um, uh, deficiencies which may have an impact later in terms of um, learning ability for example. Um, and I think one of the big challenges as we look forward we really look, have to look at more integration. So we're integrating not just across different diseases so looking beyond just focusing on malaria or HIV or TB so we have to look across the health sector. We also have to look beyond the health sector so the health sector has to work with education, housing, transport, environment in order to ensure that children have safe, healthy, secure upbringings. It also means integration across the life course. So in this series you would have seen us moving through from before birth, the neonatal period, childhood and through adolescence. And so we need to integrate the pathways of care across that. And that brings me to the third area of integration, which is integrating care and prevention from level of community, where there's key players like community health workers, lay carers, through to primary health centres, where we need to ensure that children are able to access good quality care, through to referral um, services. In a lot of areas, that pathway isn't very well integrated. 
And for all of those things, we need better data. We need data on understanding where is the burden, who are the children who are not doing as well as they could do, and why, and how can we make it better? We, un need, we, need, in, we need data to understand which interventions work and how much they cost. So what's the cost-effective, sustainable way of trying to make progress in the next 20 years?